Brewer Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. I want to make this one quick, short, whether you are somebody who's just learning about the industry or somebody who's been in the industry for a long time. There's a lot of opportunities as far as careers are concerned. And there are also uh, good habits that we could start to develop at any level of our career cycle whether we're just getting in or whether we've been in for a while and we're looking for changes. So I thought it was good to do an icebreaker for this particular video with this question I got from somebody who's initially followed me on TikTok. So thank God that's starting to work off. The, uh, uh, thank God that's starting to pay off because there's a lot of people on TikTok in healthcare or other ancillary careers looking for changes. So let me read it. Hey, Dan, I've been, how are you? I've been doing some research because I want a career change. And I came across your TikTok today and found LinkedIn. A little bit about myself. I have 15 years of lab experience, but only, she says, only six years of being a medical lab scientist. There, That's not only, that's a lot of, uh, that, that's a, that's a career right there. And my current role, I am transfusion safety compliance coordinator. And a lot of my job focuses on training RNs, MDs, residents, et cetera, as well as running audits and doing monthly statistics for my department. I basically monitor, look at the word they use, monitor our usage and wastage of blood products. And I do reports and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to skip through that. My question is, would it be a good idea to start applying? Or wait until I receive my master's. Also, is there any requirement that is needed to become a data manager? So, all right. First of all, only being used in that kind of a context, like I only have six years of experience, you have more than enough transferable skills to be a CRA, which is a clinical research associate. As I went proceeded to talk to this person. She didn't even know what a CRC or CRA was. So I'm glad TikTok's starting to penetrate the the zeitgeist, the mass mind out there and say, hey, look, there's clinical research here. So no, no master's degree needed. If you want to get a master's degree later, be my guest. To get into clinical research, you don't need a master's degree at your level of expertise, or even quite frankly, somebody with much less experience than you. You have transferable skills. What you need is to start networking. What you need is, like you have done, get on LinkedIn and start following the right people and start having these kind of conversations. What you need to do is network with organizations like Latinos in clinical research, with Black women in clinical research, with ACRP, with SOCRA. They have local chapters. You need a network. You need to immerse yourself into this industry because at the end of the day, there are people at the, working at these various stakeholders, which are sponsors, CROs, and sites, and you need to get yourself into one of these roles. All right? Now, you might think you want data manager, but that's a very specialized role. What I recommend people do is become a clinical research coordinator, and this is where it gets good for people who have been in this industry for a while. You may have been in this industry in a specialized role like data manager or even CRA, and you might not even realize that your opportunities can range the entire span of the industry. Not just let's just not think about our little segment of where we work and where we operate because you you have the entire industry at your disposal so whether you've been a data manager and now you want to work as a cra or whether you've been a cra and now you want to be a site owner or whether you've been a crc and now you want to work as a data manager or you want to work at a sponsor or maybe you want to do regulatory affairs at this stage in your career education might help and further specialization might help. Because remember, to be a generalist is really means to be a multi-specialist. And you're just adding another skill set. Sometimes it's in the form of degrees. I'm not always against degrees. People think I'm anti-degree. I'm not. But to get started in the industry, you often don't need it. But to advance in the industry, sometimes it's very helpful to have degrees or certifications. So 
What's more important than all of that, though, is networking. And what's more important than all of that is awareness. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do with TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, all this stuff is increase awareness, breadth of what you can do, what you can accomplish. CRAs, it boggles my mind how many CRAs would make fantastic site owners, but because they've only been monitoring maybe academic centers, they don't realize that it's completely practical for them to actually do this. It's not until they start monitoring regular sites, mom and pop sites, where they say, hey, wait a minute, this is something I can do. And that's just one example of so many things. CRCs wanting to be CRAs, that's a more of a um, traditional career trajectory. But you have career trajectories that are unique, maybe from CRC to regulatory affairs or study director for a biotech or maybe medical writer. I mean, you have to expand your horizons. And the only way to do that is to immerse yourself in this topic, in this industry, with the people on LinkedIn talking about it myself, Brad, Dr. Fox, Darshan, Robert Goldman, Monica Quitiva, Latinos in Clinical Research. You have to taste it, right? Don't knock it till you try it. So The biggest mistake I see people make is thinking they need a degree to get a job in the industry. And the answer to that is no. You have transferable skills. Pick up this book to understand the holistic, holistic bird's eye macro overview of the landscape. Once you have been established in some kind of capacity as a career, the opportunities are going to come to you. But Sometimes, like I've been doing this 17 years, there's still roles that I'm learning about that are brand new. And because technology and vendors, all these tech vendors are becoming so much more important to our industry, there's new careers opening up all the time. So don't focus so much on degrees initially. Focus more on networking and getting in to any job you can in the industry. Once you're in, Look at where your natural inclinations are leading you to. Start networking. Don't just focus on your little micro segment of the industry because that's not how you become a generalist. Expand your skill set through networking and then adding certifications. That makes sense. But don't just get degrees and certifications for the sake of feeling like you've done something. Hopefully this video helps. I wanted it to be a lot shorter than it was, but... It is what it is, Guru Nation. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Bye-bye.